So in this how-to article, I want to show you how you can make your own transparent wood. So this idea is not mine. It came from this great publication from Ju et al. Where they found a way to basically strip out the non-functional parts of the wood that make it opaque, um, but don't really add to its strength. Um, and leave behind just the cellulose, which is actually transparent. Um, they then replace all that non-transparent stuff, the lignin, with uh, epoxy. So this is basically wood whose had some parts of it stripped away and replaced to become kind of cyborg robot wood uh, that's even stronger. And the fun part is that it's transparent. And so I'll give you the full recipe in the uh, how-to article, but the basic way to do it is you take ordinary wood. So this is how this started. So this piece of wood right here actually started out just like this. You put it in a bath of sodium hydroxide and sodium sulfite, NaSO3, and you let it just kind of cook there um, for about 12 hours. And that strips away all of this opaque stuff and leaves behind a kind of floppy, transparent uh, uh, structural cellulose. Then once you get rid of all that cellulose, you dunk it into a bath of um, hydrogen peroxide, which bleaches a little bit more. And these two steps, the, the sodium hydroxide sulfite baths, and then the um, hydrogen peroxide baths, those are apparently more standard methods uh, that people use when creating paper, uh, for making your paper nice and white and pretty and not having it the color of regular wood. So they take that basic paper making process then the final step is you take all of your uh, cellulose, once this stuff's all gone, and you basically bubble epoxy through it in a vacuum chamber. And this gets the epoxy completely through your cellulose, and it uses all those cellulose bits as kind of light pipes, kind of like fiber optics. And so you can see it goes from, I tried it with multiple samples of wood, going from these very thin veneers to the slightly thicker plywood um, and of different colors and striations and stuff. And you can see how the, some of the samples came out. A lot of them, they came out much better than I thought, um, considering I had to deviate from Jew et al's original recipe a little bit. Uh, but you can see they're all pretty transparent. Even if they're not completely transparent, they're definitely translucent enough to be able to read and make stuff out through. Um, one thing that they don't really mention in the paper is that this transparency tends to dim when it's not pressed directly on there. So this is kind of that fiber optic light pipe effect. Um, you get a lot more diffusion of your light, a lot more light scattering whenever the wood is not directly on the surface. So that's one reason for um, trying to make this myself. I want to figure out what it was like. The other thing is, since these things, this bleaching of the wood and stripping out its lignin comes from the paper making process, I wanted to also just try what would happen if we used it on actual copy paper. Um, so you get the same thing. It goes really transparent. This is a paper towel, a white paper towel, and this is a piece of copy paper. Um, you get the same thing, but the downside is that its, it's cellulose fibers are all in disarray. Um, you don't get the structure, the strength um, that you get when you're creating the wood from an actual um, piece of wood, a tree that had to grow and support itself and thus has this internal structure that helps strengthen it. But it's still kind of cool. So if you don't have wood around, you don't want to go through this process, you can still make your own pretty darn clear laminates just out of lots of pieces of paper. I even did, uh, this is multiple slices of copy paper that were all um, pressed together and it still comes out. Um, you can see that, so this is a thicker chunk up here. It's a little cloudier. I think the key to actually making this clearer would have just been to let them sit in my bath a little bit more. The other problem that I had was my bath, I tried to do lots of samples at once. And so some of them, the water evaporated of the bath and it left some to start curling up. 
And so that, of course, affects their uh, transparency a good amount. But um, still, with a more improved process, we could totally get this going. So you could, um, you could imagine, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. So some examples, you can see just how incredibly clear we can make it, especially with these thin veneers, um, this wood. Uh, so this is an Australian recipe for making a, what is this? A baked mud lizard out in the outback. And you can see straight through it. Um, and that's super exciting and cool. And it's also really strong. The thing that I wasn't counting on though, was you can actually use your cell phone directly through it. Uh, hold on one second. Using the phone through the wood. Straight through this, these veneers are thin enough and they're also clear enough. We can actually use our apps and type. And so you could imagine you could actually have a clear wood cell phone case that you could actually work through. You can see that the wood um, still retains, because I didn't bleach it well enough, a kind of yellowish color but these colors still pop through really well. And again, you can see text right through it. Um, it's quite impressive. And so some of this that I've made even more transparent, you can see how the light scatters when I lift it off the page, but that's still pretty good. This is, you know, a couple inches um, off the page and you can still kind of make out what's going on. And of course, when pressed against it, it's just super clear. So that's cool. I've never seen wood do this before. And I wanted to try to figure out a way that people could make this by themselves at home. So there you go. The recipe is simple. Try it out.